Hiya! Yeah. Another cooling on Venus. First I wasn't going to show this video because I was just doing it for water, but then I decided to make this contraption here, which is much more complex, and I like complex. Now, here is the shut up and just tell us how it works explanation. This tank here is representing a room. So we've got uh, 50,000 liters in here. Okay, it's already cooled down, but uh, forget about that for a minute. The water I generated from uh, the H2 combustor doesn't matter. All this is doing is taking the combustion materials out. Again, it doesn't matter. These things are the stuff that matter. This extracts water from the main line. It's got a little chip in here. All the chip is doing is saying um, if this line is below 10 megapascals, fill it up. This is our little radiator array and it is connected to this air conditioner. It is connected to the input and the output side of the air conditioner and the waste side is connected to where the water is dumped in. The air conditioner is configured to attempt to heat this network up to 10 degrees above ambient temperature. Ambient temperature is 464 and we've got it set to 474. All of these uh, radiators are probably overkill, you probably need half of them, but as a result we are just warming nothing and this waste pipe here just keeps getting colder and colder and colder. Right now it's at 363. 370 is about the limit, about the upper limit that you need because that is when the game allows water to liquefy. This is not realistic. Uh, water is more of a pseudo linear thing. I don't know how hot and pressurized water would have to be for it to never become a gas or to flash into a solid. It doesn't matter. Who cares about science? This is a game. In here, we've got our evaporation chamber. We have to use an evaporation chamber. It does not work in a pipe. We are dumping any water that we generate into this pipe here. These radiators are warming it up to evaporate it. That drain right there allows the gaseous water to escape but keeps the liquid water in. That's, uh, that's just a feature of the, uh, of the drain. This new powered vent is sucking out as much gas as possible and is sending it back in here to be reliquified. Uh, this vent here is just so we, we can look in. It's showing as a vacuum that is not 100% accurate. Basically, the vapor stays in the chamber for a tick. It gets added in at like near the beginning of the tick, wherever it is in the, uh, in the whole API call, and then gets removed again by this vent. We can't see it because the tablet is being updated in a part of the cycle where the gas is not in the chamber. But the gas is in the chamber for a short period of time. That is cooling down these radiators here, which is connected to our fake room. And as you can see, it is dragging down that temperature very quickly. We're already at 425, and we've come down from 464. Okay, that's the end of our shut up and just tell us explanation. Let me get this over here and we'll grab pipes. There we go. And we'll cut this pipe here and we'll put a pipe here so that we can equalize the temperature outside. That's not what I wanted. I have to use shortcut keys because for some reason on Linux you can't drag the items around. around. Okay, we'll shut the, no, we'll shut it off like this. We'll shut the air conditioner off just so that we don't over, we don't over cool this pipe here. We don't want too much liquid in in here. And of course I get the hiccups as soon as I start recording. Oh, and the other bullshit that's around here is just nothing. This just connects over here so that we can read the, we can read the, uh, the tank, a little transformer here so that we're only using one, uh, RTG. And, uh, we're not actually using too, too much power in this, uh, in this setup. I think we're only using 700, 800 watts. Uh, we'll look at it at the end. Let's just wait until this equalizes. Equalization from this point on is going to be a little slow. We are like 20 degrees below ambient, uh, but the pressure has gone back up to uh, what it was before. So let's just say that's close enough. And we will cut this one more time and we will go to pipes and we'll rejoin the pipe here like so. And the, uh, the air temperature will already start dropping because it sucked out all of the cold gas in here. We will turn our air conditioner on more. now. If we set this to a higher temperature, it is not going to, it's not going to make this any colder any quicker. You can add more air conditioners on here. That's why this is looped up here like this because uh, I had them, you know, stacked three, which was very fast uh, generating liquid water. But let's just uh, do it like this for now. 
And we've got a little bit of liquid water. We're keeping about 0.6 moles in the staging area, let's call it this little pipe right here. And we're keeping about 26.1 moles before evaporation. And again, the chamber registers as empty. Now, if we go back to our little display here, we can see that we're very quickly falling. Well, not very quickly, we're about uh, 0.1 degree every two ticks, I guess one and a half ticks so 0.1 degrees every one and a half ticks again this is this is a fairly large volume of gas what's the largest gas carbon dioxide so we got 1.76 kilomoles of gas in here now let's just line ourselves up nice and pretty like this and then i will record a time lapse well not really a time lapse i'll record a, a segment here and then speed it up later on We should be below our refrigerant temperature now, at least over here, and we are not. The cool end continues to get colder. It's at 350 now, and we're at 360 here, but the temperature is going down at about the same rate still. So it should surpass this at some point. Then we'll see our cooling differential get, getting wider and wider and wider. Again, we can add more air conditioners onto this system. We don't have to daisy chain them. We just need to get this, this temperature below uh, 370. One of the reasons that this might be a little too cold is that we don't have enough shunting power. And we can see the liquid on the other side is 252 already. We can then improve our standing a little bit, our cooling a little bit by grabbing, no, not the big one. The big one would probably be better, but it just, it won't fit because you can't get the, uh, can't get the other side like that there now that should help the cooling a bit there this side's getting a little bit warmer and that is dropping the temperature much more quickly so we've added a little bit more efficiency to the whole setup and we are dropping temperature much quicker now this of course won't drop uh, a lot because eventually uh, this side will warm up and this side will cool down will be closer to equilibrium and it won't drop as quickly. We've been sort of storing up coldness on this side um, because we've been doing it so inefficiently in here. Now again there's more ways of, of doing it efficiently. We can brute force it with more of these guys but for now let's just keep going the way we way with, with, bleh. let's just keep going the, the way that we were and we'll continue to fast forward. It only takes like 30 seconds for the fast forwarding and I'm watching stuff while this is recording in the background.
We are now at 300 degrees Celsius, 269 in the pipes here. And this is still 365. It's gone up a little. I think it was 350, if I'm not mistaken. And how much uh, water is in there? Not very much. There's about a, a liter of water. So more valves might help drain it quicker. That's what you need to do. You need to get the water out of this pipe as quickly as possible into this pipe and evaporating as quickly as possible. And we've got 0.3 liters in here. Actually, that's wrong. This would be 0.9 milliliters, not almost a liter. It's almost a milliliter, so that's not a lot. And possibly to get this to evaporate faster, uh, you might be able to put more drains in there. Actually, let's put another drain in there. Let's see if that works. I don't think it'll work, but it might. Generally, in real life, if you give something more surface area, it will evaporate faster. And it doesn't... Oh, well, maybe it is. Was that at 0.3? Yeah, I think it was at 0.3 before. It's going up slowly, so it's not evaporating as quickly. Oh, but we do have atmosphere in the evaporation chamber now. So if we can get that up more quickly, and it is going up slowly, but if you can get that up more quickly, it'll evaporate more quickly. That's generally what you need to do. You just need to pull as much gas out of that environment as possible, and then cool it back down over here. Now this thing, even though that we've, we've uh, reduced the temperature in that tank quite a bit, we're below three, uh, 300 degrees Celsius now, these efficiencies haven't hasn't changed yet. It's always been 36 and 10, which is uh, a terrible efficiency, but we're still pulling it down uh, very effectively. And again, all we need to do is add more ACs. We don't need to daisy chain them. We can do them in parallel and it will uh, be as effective as it is right now. Well, it'll be as effective electrically as it is now, uh, but it'll go faster. You'll have just as many You'll be using just as many watts of electricity for watts of cooling. Let's give this a little bit of a kick here by putting in a pump. And that pump should be able to draw more atmosphere from this side. Here we are at about the extent of our cooling and the final form of our cooling plant here. We still got our little block. I tried different combinations of things, but the block uh, is the best. I don't know if that's uh, how it was configured before, but that's how it's configured now. Got two large powered vents uh, pulling atmosphere from inside the cell to this uh, one, uh, 100 liter volume pipe. And a turbo pump pushing it through here and then back into the main coolant line that I gave a little more mass to, a little more volume because um, I wanted to keep it a little more stable. We're coming off the inside of that cell at 170 degrees, 177 degrees Celsius. After we're done squishing it all up, it only gains three degrees uh, and that is cooling the 263 degrees uh, water getting put back into the system. It goes down to 178 degrees. And I'm just using this uh, heat exchanger because who the hell cares? The heat exchanger is not very efficient. We're only getting a delta of 0.0006 degrees every tick. Uh, that can be improved significantly uh, using a different type of heat exchange system. Uh, but I'm just going to stick with this for now because who the hell cares? Uh, I have three ACs here, but only one is actually being used, and it is at 1% efficiency. And the reason it's at 1% efficiency is because we are both 300 degrees Celsius here. So we're cooling, uh, we've cooled this pipe down 160 degrees about, and that's pretty much the extent that this thing can handle. Now there's some unfortunate things here that I don't know if the developers did intentionally, or if they just guessed how much of a difference they wanted uh, for the efficiency to start falling but the air conditioner in on Venus is just 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 not enough to start condensing polluted gas if you're able to get it down um, another four another 40 degrees it would be fairly simple to start you know compressing polluted gas into a liquid and then use that as the secondary loop it might be able to get down that far but I don't think so I think the extent that we're probably going to get 
is about 160. And even then, it becomes uh, less and less stable the further down you go. This is very stable up to about, I guess, 240 degrees. At 240 degrees, this system can swallow a lot of mass and still function properly. And all you really need to do is set this uh, pressure line up to be able to cool a higher mass at a time. Turning more of these on is not going to work because your efficiency is already tanked, so it's it's crap. Uh, raising that line, uh, even one megapascal improves the uh, the differential efficiency by like four to six percent or something like that. So you would have to like have a good many of them. Now we're going to start ingesting some polluted gas. Here we go. And we'll see that that affects our delta a bit, but we are ingesting polluted gas. Uh, we also got some uh, water in here that we've are uh, that we've done before. You can also inject water directly into the uh, system, and we just do that by turning this switch on here. Now this increases efficiency quite a bit because we're putting we're shoving cold water in there, but that water won't stay cold because it's going to have to ingest it from over here. As you can see, it's already gone up to uh, 30 degrees Celsius because it's pulling from this guy here. Turning these on might help a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. We can see on the graph here, we're stabilizing at 0 0.001 approximately, and we're still ingesting. Once we hit 177 here, then uh, we'll stop having a delta. And uh, this can be increased quite a bit. Um, let's just inject water directly. This is going to uh, cause the system to be overwhelmed a bit, probably. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. But this is just going to grab water from this side and shove it over to this side. And as soon as the, yeah, there. Once the pressure uh, went down, we lost, uh, we lost the cool water that we were able to manage. And then now it's got to recover. If these guys had programmable data ports, you could switch it on and off. But um, there doesn't seem to be a port. There doesn't seem to be a way to move uh, fluid from liquid to gas in an automated way it's weird like i can use a purge valve but the purge valve isn't going to do much we're down to 88 again and that's going to take time to recover back down to the where where we were and we can see that this is back up to 133. we've kind of destabilized this whole thing by uh grabbing pure water out of here and the water in the tank is just about to start liquefying the uh the gas in the tank is just about to start liquefying now, once we start liquefying water in here, we can then use that in a secondary loop, but it's not going to be as efficient as, say, one of the other gases. And basically, I'm just doing this to demonstrate that it's possible to cool a base without using any kind of really weird tricks. You don't have to starve the, the ACs. You don't have to daisy chain them all the way down because you have to daisy chain them with uh, uh, the 50 degree uh, difference. And that's when these guys will work the most efficient. You can just use the game's laws of physics. Okay, we'll sh now we'll uh, just demonstrate how to get, how to uh, make this system consume a large amount of mass and still cool it down and then be able to tune it later on. So we're just going to get this out and we don't, you don't need to use a program. You can set this, you can set these, the um, filtration system manually or, you know, not use a filtration system and just use a series of tanks. We're going to go in here and I'm going to say six megapascals. Now this thing's going to fill and it's going to overwhelm the system. As we can see, our efficiency is dropping like a stone and this temperature is going up rapidly. Or not as rapidly as I thought it would. We do have three ACs on right now, so it's kind of suppressing any temperature rise they would be. It also might work better if you set this with a dial, like we had a dial beside it, instead of like constantly programming it, but whatever. Okay, now we're back up to six kilopascals, and we gotta wait for these guys to bring it down uh, 20 degrees. And we're back up to 18% uh, because of the temperature differential. And we're probably really out of water, yeah. So everything is dry right now, and we'll just have to wait a few minutes for that to get down to 370, 365, something like that. I would kill to turn this fucking heat effect off. Like, make the edges, make the borders of the of the game red. This stupid blobbing everywhere just is very distracting. It's not ADHD friendly. 
There we go. Now we're getting liquid water in the system. I also want to point out that I am not running off of a RTG. I am running off of four, is it four? Four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15 solar panels. Probably need a few more, but the uh, battery's kind of bouncing in between, you know, whatever. So now we've got water in the system. It is heating up the tank because we don't have, we have uh, cooler stuff in the tank. And I forgot uh, the, there's something wrong in Linux that I can't use that. Okay, let's shove carbon dioxide in there. And that's going to rapidly decrease the temperature or increase the temperature of the tank. So we have a delta of 0 0.07 degrees per tick. So that's 0.14 per second. Okay, so we've just about double hit our target here. Just a few more degrees or a few more PSI or KPA. And there we go. Now let's t stop ingesting. And that will very quickly give us a positive temperature coefficient or a negative temperature coefficient, a positive temperature reduction. I'll let this settle for a few seconds. And that's about all we're going to get right now is 0 0.002. Well, let's see what we got over here. So we are... 239 on this line and it is filling up slowly we're at 0.63 liters so if we come over here the system is starting to cool down and is starting to ret retain water now the more water ret we retain the more stable it will the uh, the system will be because it's just mass and we are ingesting some more gas every so often there we just ingest a little bit more and we're at 10% efficiency, which is like the most we can we can hope for in this environment. Uh, we can increase the pressure up to 10 megapascals. That would be well above water's infinite point on this planet. There's no such thing as an infinite point. I'm just calling it an infinite point because that's the point in which um, it will absorb an infinite amount of energy and do nothing. Now let's change this over back to a purge valve. Set it to zero and start stealing water from the, the system here. Or start stealing cold air from the system. But uh, we're doing it to, to grab water. Eventually this will crash, but at the time being we are okay. We are shoving it, we're shoving our artificial room here down back to uh, close to 200 degrees. We can easily get to 237 right now. That, uh, that seems like a, a reasonable projection. And we can see our trend here is downwards because we are leaching this system and not giving any water back over here. If we turn one of these ACs off, we can see how that'll affect the system. It'll take a few seconds. I don't think we're going to see a big reaction. And we're really not. See? We've lost a re uh, a, uh, an AC and we're still having the exact same trend. We'll shut another one off. This may be a little more profound, but probably not much more. And we're really not seeing that much of a change. That's because in this in this type of a setup, pressure is more important than temperature. All we're doing is maintaining temperature here, which is not hard because there isn't very much mass in that that one small segment. There's only uh, 726 moles of liquid oxygen and the or uh, gaseous uh, gaseous water, and the liquid water is just being sucked out as fast as we can as we can create it. Might be a little deeper, but that's about it. We've reached a pivotal part, pivotal part here, and that is the water is now condensing in this tank. Right now, I'm just siphoning it off, but now that, the, that it's condensing, we can use that as a coolant somewhere else and bring the temperature down even lower. Right now, we're looking at 22 degrees in our main coolant uh, trunk. Our refrigerant trunk because we are evaporating and we are looking at 248 C in the fake uh, room here. Now it was a long time coming to this point because the lines had to charge up. Also now that we're doing this our main trunk line is now beginning to overload slowly and that's because the water that was in that tank is now evaporating in our evaporation chamber and being sucked in over here. But it is helping us cool a bit because this line is 233 degrees and we're pushing it into the heat exchanger, the counterflow heat heat exchanger at 236. It's coming out at 256 and it's bringing this pipe down to 286, all sixes. And our main line here is 359. 
Okay, so for now we're doing we're going overkill because I actually don't know how efficient this is going to be. But let's connect up this pipe here so that we can start evaporating water out of the system. Now we're going to turn this pump on, turn this pump on, turn this pump on, there we go. And that's evaporating very quickly and effectively. We are using a lot of power with these large powered vents and this uh, turbo pump, but I think that could be optimized as well. Uh, we were warming up our main tank here, but that's starting to reverse now. Uh, and we probably have to put our... Oh, we do have that on. Okay, good. Okay, we're up to 365. So let's turn the other ACs on just to keep the, the, cool, the uh, main trunk suppressed here. We want to make sure that this doesn't turn on. So we're going to turn this back on just to make sure that we're not injecting any hot water into this trunk line, which I think we already did. I think one of the problems we had is that we emptied out this line pretty, uh, pretty effectively here, and it has to charge back up, so we're not we're not in a um, as good of a place. But our delta is going is is on an upward angle, so hopefully we're not going to go nuts here. And our temperature in our tank is 78 degrees, so our fake room is now 78 degrees. I think what we can do is we can shut off one of these lines here. There we go. And we can put a sensor on this uh, large vent so that we can tell it to turn off when the tank is at the target temperature. But we're just going to tell it to cool it as, as, uh, as quickly and as much as possible. Uh, we also might want to think about recovering some of this uh, cooling here so that this, this line here is at 125C and this line here is at 121C. So if we put a counterflow here, uh, we can recover some of the cooling back into the room. It looks like we're maintaining 66 degrees. Now one of the things we could also do, I, I wish this was automated so we could pop it on and off, but if we turn this off, we can start decreasing the temperature even more. Now, we haven't hooked this up to a, a large, um, an actual large room, so we're just, we're basically just cooling a vacuum. But once we reach that temperature that we want, we can pop it back on, and then pop it off, and then just keep going back and forth to maintain a temperature. We'll probably want more than just one line if it's a, if it's a large room, but we basically cooled this tank down to 60 some odd degrees, um, without really trying. Well, I say without really trying, but that's um, a huge understatement. That was a disgusting understatement, but just by using these little rooms. And these little rooms can be can be jury-rigged together, so we can have one room like this attached to another room, attached to another room, and bring it down and be using, well, these fans here. These fans are using a lot of, of power, but you can, you can optimize the evaporation. And yes, it's being daisy-chained, but using a daisy chain evaporation is a lot, uh, I don't want to say easier, but it's, it's a lot more flexible than using these ACs. Because these ACs, they have a maximum differential on them. But if you're using, it's now looping all over the place, but we're still cooling, more or less. Uh, we can, um, you can cool much more effectively. So. We're going down 200 degrees just with this room here and using, I know I turned two on, but I don't think we need to, just using one AC. And the only reason that we need to use the AC is to bring the temperature down to the, uh, below the infinity, infinity point of water in the game. There's no such thing as an infinity point in real life. And we can, we can do all of this without invar all we really need is steel because you need you don't even need really steel because we're not using any radiators and we don't need a heat exchanger because the heat will exchange in these cells you just need to keep the different fluids away from each other and the greatest the good part about this is is that once you get down to 370 degrees on your main trunk and then you get down to like a more reasonable temperature like 237 degrees in your stabilization, quote unquote, stabilization room, trunk, or whatever the hell you want to call it, you can start getting down to this temperature here, which is 
sub 100 degrees, then you can use polluted gas and you can get it down even further. And you really only need the one air conditioner to bring it down. Now, these powered vents are using a lot of electricity, but I am also going way overboard with this design. There's a lot of mass in here, but pretty much in total, we are, we are not pretty much, we are in total only using 425 kilowatts. I'm not sure how many watts of electricity we're shed, or watts of uh, heat we're shedding, but this is ex this is very efficient. Uh, there are a lot of losses in here as well, but yeah. And you know, don't, don't copy this design. I know a lot of people on the internet copy, like they look at people's designs and they copy them. Do not copy my design. This is a lazy design that I'm just throwing together more or less on the fly to demonstrate how this works. You don't need as many of these uh, these things here. Uh, you don't need an outrigger tank, although you probably want a uh, some kind of storage tank. There also seems to be a leak or a glitch or something somewhere where, and it's probably in these rooms here, where water is disappearing and I have to put more water in the system. It's not a lot of water, but I could also be disappearing because I change the networks all the time. And every once in a while when you change a network, you'll get an error and you'll lose the contents of the network. So just take that with a grain of salt. You would also need less powered pumping of gas if these cells are bigger. If these evaporation cells were much, much bigger and you had a whole bunch of passive vents in there, you would be able to get away with using fewer pumps and things like that. Actually, I don't know if that's true now because they did change the game. So it used to be that these pumps would grab, the turbo pumps would grab whatever was in the, the 10 pipes to the up, up start, yeah, upstream of it. And now it's, I think it's look, looking at the whole network and then grabbing a certain amount of volume in that network. So that might have changed. But regardless, the, the bigger evaporation chamber, the more evaporation points, the more of these points that there are, um, the easier that you can get, the easier that you can suck everything down. Plus, you don't need to use a pump like, okay, say if, say if this, uh, this line here from inside this evaporation cell were being cooled directly by the air conditioner. You can put these taps on here and it will suck the water out. So the water would be evaporating from the drain, then entering, uh, then that air would enter a passive vent. The passive vent would be cooled or continued to be cooled by an air conditioner, which would turn some of it into a liquid, which would be immediately uptake by the condensers. So you wouldn't need a pump. The way that f uh, the liquids work in the game, um, these would act like a passive pump and pull all the water out of the system. That would only work if it was really big and you had a lot of vents. And um, I might do that in the future just to show that you don't need a lot of electricity. I'm using a lot of electricity just because I have these solar panels nearby. And this whole thing is being uh, operated on just a few solar panels. I'm, I may be under powered here at the moment, but it's a lot better than, you know, trying to strive to get your uh, optimum efficiency in these air conditioners because they are a pain in the ass. If they worked like real air conditioners and you, you chose a the proper fluid in them or you engineered the proper refrigerant in them, you wouldn't have nearly as bad of a time as you are now. Anybody who's looking at mini splits, you might see some difficulty buying a mini split if you live in like um, a cold climate like Canada where it regularly goes under uh, minus 20 degrees and the refrigerant isn't rated for that. There is refrigerants that are rated for lower than 20 degrees. There are refrigerants that can go all the way, they can, there's refrigerants that can go to, to absolute zero and basically that's helium or hydrogen. I'm not sure, one of the two, either he, helium or hydrogen, probably helium it is, you can, you can actually go to like a couple degrees above absolute zero just as long as you choose the proper refrigerant, the only reason mini splits you don't get that refrigerant is because the refrigerant is more expensive and you have to buy a quote unquote 
special um, mini split for that, but you don't really need the special mini split. It's just, it's because of how cheaply they make it. They're not adaptive. It doesn't matter. I am ranting now. But I wish these air conditioners gave you the opportunity, like the Sterling engines, to put a specific fluid that you want in there, and they, like, gave you a choice of fluids. It'd be great if you can manufacture fluids. You have the chlorine gas and polluted volatiles is probably um, uh, a natural refrigerant. I forget what it is now, but it's like uh, it's uh, hydro chloral hydro something zine whatever. But if you if they if they gave you that choice, then you could make a you can choose the proper gas to stick in the air conditioners. They've already made it so all of these systems are all modular and they can put any gas, any solid, or anything in that it, it all looks more or less the same. The nuggets are just colored different. The gases are just colored different. So they already have the basis to making the whole thing work. And it would also be, they could also make it e really super easy for us to mod just by sticking a file somewhere in the, uh, the stationer's directory that would, that we could like add a line to and then say like, ID 0005 helium and then put the properties that we want helium to be with its vaporization point its its um, condensation point its solidification point and we could put any gas or any solid into the game that we want and then just work that way but I, I hope that they do that it would be easy for them to do that it would make the game uh, infinitely funner but it also would be it would make the game it, it, it would mean that anybody could could mod the game any way they want and it would it would it would mean there wouldn't be a uniform play across the spectrum everybody would be playing with different gases and things like that and then anyway see you later